What's up, guys? Joe Cimarelli here, host of the Cut and Retie podcast on the Penobscot River, hanging out with the crew from Old Town, doing a little smallmouth fishing today. This is an awesome river for that. You know, over the years, people have asked me, Joe, what are like the top five smallmouth lures you can't live without? Well, I'm not going to get into all of them right now, but I can tell you one of them, 100%, is the Zoom Super Fluke. Now, several companies make very similar finesse style shads, and you're gonna find the one that works best for you. I just like the Zoom. But what makes baits like this so great is their versatility. You can rig this a bunch of different ways. They crush fish in salt water and fresh water alike. But I'm gonna show you guys the two ways I most commonly rig this lure, specifically for small mouths in moving water. The first is weedless style, which is probably the most common way to rig one of these lures. And it's really effective anytime you have any sort of weed or debris in the area. So if you were to come up on a bank full of grass and want to throw right up into that flooded edge, you're going to want to rig one of these lures weedless so they can run through all that junk. So this is classic weedless style. He's going to come through the nose, out the chin, turn the hook around inside the bait like that. Flukes have this nice body cavity to hide the hook and right up through the back like that. A more modern style of rigging that actually works really well is nose hooking these baits where you take a small finesse hook and just pierce it once right through the tip of this bait's nose. What that does is it adds range of motion. So now this bait can move very easily side to side on that hook and pivot. Now it's not weedless, so you wanna do this in rocky areas or open water where there's not a lot of grass or debris. But that rigging style adds a very unique action to this lure, a darting, jackknifing action. It changes direction very easily and smallmouths can't leave it alone. Now one downside of that rigging style is that once that nose wears out, sometimes you'll lose more baits because they'll eventually rip through. So you have to be cognizant of that. So when I have this lure rigged weedless style, I tend to work with the rod tip down and low to the water, more like you would a hard plastic jerk bait. But when I nose hook one of these baits, I tend to fish higher in the water column and with the rod tip up, popping higher in the air, letting that, that bait just kick just below the surface, maybe even boil a little bit, fall back down flat like a dying bait fish, and then kick again. And you never know which direction it's gonna go when you have it nose hooked. And that's often the trigger that turns a non-committal fish into an eater. Weedless style, you lose fewer baits, but a lot of times that nose hooking style catches more fish. Hey, come on over and join me and my ragtag bunch of guests over on the Cut and Retie podcast. And if you want more tips like this, check out oldtownwatercraft.com.